I have pride flags stuck to the wall with washi tape, so let's pray they don't fall down before the end of the video. Hello everybody, it's Katie here. So Pride Month 2020 is upon us and I'm pretty sure every Pride March in the world is going to be cancelled this year. Thanks, Covid. So one of the things that I particularly like to use my channel for and my blog for as well is to encourage people to pick up diverse books so I could not let Pride Month go by without recommending some of my favourite LGBTQ plus reads. I know a lot of these books you will have seen before on my channel anyway. Some of them I read when I was in my severe reading slump so I didn't get a chance to talk about them. There's a huge pile next to me and I am resting my arm on them at the moment because it's comfortable. So considering I probably won't have a Pride March to go to this year, I'm going to have my own little Pride at home and reread some of these books and hopefully discover some fantastic new ones. So let's start off with some women loving women books. I don't have nearly enough of these books at the moment. It's only recently that I've got back on my reading game so I'm having to recommend the books that I have currently on my shelves because I'm not able to get my hands on any new ones. So please feel free to drop some recs down in the comments because I need more women loving women content in my life. But I do have a few that I can throw at you. So the first one I've talked about before but it is You Know Me well by Nina Lakua and David Levithan. So the reason why I love this book so much is because it celebrates pride in general so it is a great book to read during pride month. It does split between two characters so there is focus on a gay character as well but the main romance in this book is definitely between the two female characters. They are adorable, it focuses on discovering yourself in general, exploring your sexuality, coming to accept things about yourself and it just has a lot of love for the LGBT community. I'd highly encourage anyone to pick up Nina's books especially during June. There's Everything Leads to You and We Are Okay. So another one that I have if you just want to read about a girl figuring out her sexuality is Girl Heart Girl by Lucy Sutcliffe. So this is a memoir but it's really uplifting and it celebrates accepting yourself. So if you're looking for something that isn't contemporary I'm going to recommend one that's a little bit different and it is the Next Together duology by Lauren James. So this is more of a sci-fi duology and the first book is about a heterosexual couple that keep finding each other in different time periods but the second book focuses on two girls, Clove and Ella. And it's basically just cute girlfriends through space and time which you know is exactly what we need. It is one that probably requires you to read the first book to understand what's going on but honestly that second book is so worth it. So moving on to some men loving men books now. I absolutely have to recommend Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. This book is so beautiful. It very much focuses on the friendship that leads to romance. There's so much backstory between these characters. The writing is gorgeous. The characters are Mexican so it delves into that side of their lives as well. All in all I just love the way that this story is told and I think it's one that everyone needs to pick up at some point. The next one I have is one that I recommend every Pride Month and it is Noah Can't Even by Simon James Green. If you were looking for a funny read pick this one up. Noah is an absolute disaster but we love him for it. So everything kind of changes for Noah after he kisses his best friend and the story revolves around him trying to come to terms with that. Him and Harry are so cute. These books are just happy hilarious and very British and I'm always trying to hype up UKYA so yeah. I was gonna recommend this one. I'm going to recommend a classic now and it is Morris by E.M. Forster. Th this is just a perfect read for Pride Month because even though times have changed from when this book was written, I think it's super important to look back at the past and to acknowledge what non-straight people had to go through to get to where we are now. And this is one of those books that's very sobering to think about but it also manages to be very hopeful as well despite the fact that people during this time they didn't really have many options and a lot of them ended up in heterosexual relationships just because they had to hide who they really were. So yeah this one is an important one. A couple of other quick recommendations if you would like your heart broken go for More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. This has one of my favourite plot twists but it is painful so keep that in mind. And then I have Release by Patrick Ness. So this one is kind of like a modern retelling of Mrs Dalloway but it follows a gay teen boy in small town America. There's a lot of delving into his family and their views 
on homosexuality. And I think it also took influence from Forever by Judy Bloom as well. And I know for years I was saying that I'd really like a version of Forever for the LGBT community because we always have teen books that focus on teens becoming sexually active, but you rarely get them for non-straight teens. So I just think that this book covers a lot of topics that we needed to discuss. Moving on to some bisexual rap, I have two books that I want to talk about. So the first one is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Evelyn is a bisexual character and although she had seven husbands, she is actually in love with a woman and their story is told so beautifully in this book. And Evelyn does discuss her bisexuality as well. It does approach the topic of a lesbian woman being with a bisexual woman and dealing with her also sleeping with men. So th this story is gorgeous anyway, but that's such an important part of the book. And the other book I have is Red, White and Royal Blue. So the story is about Alex and Henry's relationship. Henry is a Prince of England and Alex is the son of the president. Henry is gay but Alex is bisexual and again that's something that is discussed quite a lot in the book and also in general this is a story that just celebrates diversity and it is a really uplifting story so it's guaranteed to make you happy. In terms of trans books I have quite a few that I love very much and one of them is George by Alex Gino. I can never stress enough how important this book is because it's a story that really can be read by anyone of any age. If there is a child struggling with gender identity then this is something that they can read and take comfort in. If there is a parent of a child who is going through those struggles this can offer a lot of insight into what their child is going through. And it also showcases how age doesn't matter when it comes to these things, that we shouldn't not take kids seriously just because they're kids. If they feel that something is true to them then we shouldn't dismiss that just because they're young. So again this is one of those books that I just think everyone should read at some point. And the next one that I have is I Was Born For This by Alice Osman. This is one of my absolute favourite contemporary books. I didn't really make a discussion video about this at the time because it was when I wasn't really active on booktube that I read it but I seriously love this book so much. So this story follows two characters. One is Jimmy who is the frontman of a band called The Ark and he is transgender and then the other character is Angel who is a mega fan of this band and they are thrown together accidentally but it's not it's not one of those stories where the band member ends up falling in love with the fan it's nothing like that at all. It really is a book about self-discovery and realising what you want out of life and Jimmy's side of the book is so important because it discusses his feelings on everything and it's a wonderful example of how authors can put trans characters in their stories so easily. It doesn't have to be a big deal. They are part of everyday life and we need to be showing that in every sort of media. So books like this show that there's no excuse for other authors because it's so simple to include trans characters as long as you do your research correctly. So the next one that I wanted to talk about as well, it's an independently published book that I read a few years ago and it is A Boy Like Me by Jenny Wood. So this was one of the first trans books that I remember reading for my blog and honestly it was so insightful and it taught me a lot. Again it's a book that deals with opening up to the people around you. This story follows a character called Peyton who was born a girl but he knows that he's a boy and the story follows his transition, his journey to accepting his true self, him falling in love with a girl, him having to deal with getting his first period. Things that we don't talk about enough but we really should. I interviewed Jenny when this book came out and we talked about why the book was so important and what she hopes readers will get from it so I will leave a link to that in the description if you want to check that out. So moving on to some Q plus books. First one I want to talk about is Vanilla by Billy Merrill. This this came at a time when I was searching for books with asexual rep and this one appeared. So just in general it's a really standout book because it's told in verse. It's set out in different styles but it follows two boys who have been in a relationship for a very long time. They've gone through school together and they are that couple who people just assume will be together forever. But one of them starts to realise that they are asexual and the book is about dealing with that as two people in a relationship and what it's like for that person who's having that realisation and how difficult it is to open up and talk about it because it can be difficult when you don't know how the other person's going to react or how much they're going to understand that. So I really love this one when I read it and I would highly recommend it. I'm always looking for books with ace rep so 
Again, drop recommendations. So another one that I want to talk about is Wonderland by Juno Dawson. This is a modern retelling of Alice in Wonderland where the main character, Alice, goes in search of a character named Bunny. The two of them spent a night together before Bunny disappeared with out a trace. So Alice takes it upon herself to go in search of her. It's set in a very high society world with some very troubled rich kids. And the main character is transgender but she is also pansexual and it is so difficult to find pansexual characters in YA, let alone as a main character. So thank god Juno decided to write this book. And it, it does have that reaction from somebody when Alice says that she's pansexual. The good old, does that mean you're sexually attracted to pans? Yes, we love kitchenware. You you think that is something that just doesn't get said in real life, but like honestly, it does. So the final two I'm going to talk about, and the first one is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is a sci-fi book. There's lots of different planets, lots of different species. Sexuality it isn't really a thing. So it's very much just, you know, romance without having to deal with sexuality without dealing with labels. And so if you like stories of a certain genre that just happen to include queer characters then this is one for you. And then the last one I'm going to quickly mention is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This is a great example of a fantasy book that just fits queer characters into the story. Simon never actually defines himself. He thinks he's heterosexual until shit goes down with Baz and after that he doesn't know how to label himself. And so what's great about this story is that he doesn't have to label himself. It's not something that he has to deal with. He's been attracted to Agatha in the past but he's also attracted to Baz and it's just the way it is. He's not exclusively attracted to one specific gender. I had to mention Carry On because it is the book that made me just go out and search for fantasy books with non-straight characters. So they are some of my top recommendations for Pride Month. So like I said I'm always looking for more recommendations so please feel free to leave your own down in the comments. I know there are so many that have been published over the past few years that I've completely missed out on because of my reading slump. I've spent the last three years basically only reading sequels to books that I've already read or rereading books. But I'm out of the slump now, I'm looking for new stories, so hit me with those wrecks. Also before I go, so a few years ago for Pride Month I made myself a watercolour bookmark that had Read Proud on it and somebody asked me on Twitter at that time to scan in the bookmark and put the picture online so they could print it and use it themselves. So I've made a couple of new ones this year that are bigger so that I can scan them in in higher quality and I've posted them online to be downloaded and printed off if you want to turn it into a bookmark for yourself. Obviously it needs to be printed on card or some thick paper like photo paper because these ones are painted directly onto watercolour paper so they're thick and hardy anyway. So yeah if you would like to print one and make your own then I will leave a link to where the pictures can be found in the description so feel free to do that. If you do download them and make your own bookmark out of them then please consider buying a book by your favourite LGBT author and use the bookmark with that book because we need to be supporting diverse authors. So yeah please tell me your favourite pride reads and what you're planning to read throughout this month. Thank you guys so much for watching, I will see you next time, bye! The flags stayed up, I'm proud of them.